The opinions expressed in the video you are about to see are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Today I'm on the 175BR from Bayliner. Now obviously Bayliner is a company that's known for making affordable boats, but they're also very good at making boats that are engineered to perform very well with minimum horsepower. I've got a 135 horsepower, 3 liter stern drive on this boat, and I'm going to see how she performs on a full test. For Botest.com, I'm Captain Steve. Now we're obviously in some calm water here, but jumping wakes was very revealing and it showed that the boat handles wakes very well. It throws water off to the sides rather than over the boat. I got nothing in the windshield even though I tried to. Now let's talk about trimming the 175BR. When you get up on plane, you're going to want to bring the trim up right to about the one quarter mark, maybe even a little bit less. You'll feel a burst of speed coming from your back and the spray will move from the helm over to the stern quarters. If you go any more than that one quarter mark, you'll start ventilating the prop. And of course, you're going to want to drop it back down again before you do any maneuvering. When taking off, you're going to get bow rise. I've normally seen 15, 16 degrees on the 175BR, 12 degrees, and that was very interesting. I find visibility to be outstanding in the 175BR. Even with the windshield frame coming up from a whole shot, there's no visibility loss due to the bow. And when you're on plane, I'm looking right through the windshield. It's very nice. I really like what Bayliner has done this year with their helm. Still kept the free gauges with the chrome bezels and full instrumentation where normally on a price point boat, you'll only see the speedometer and tachometer and maybe a trim gauge. And here's a feature you don't usually see, a blower indicator. It lights up when the blower is operating. That's a nice touch. One thing I think Bayliner could do is make this area bevel down a little bit just so you have a place to put stuff. Rack and pinion steering, very effective, just one finger. And not only notice how the horn is a different kind of switch, but it is separated from the regular switches. Very easy to find in a hurry. I find the 175BR to be a boat that I would absolutely hand the keys to one of the kids to. It's very forgiving in its performance. If you put it into a hard turn, it bleeds off so much speed that you really can't get into trouble. Even if you don't want to slow the boat down, it'll do it for you. Taking a look under the engine box, two gas assist struts lifted up easily showing our 3 liter 135 horsepower Merc Cruiser engine. I would very much like to see a fire extinguisher discharge port mounted right in the front. Now of course I haven't had time to sit down and put the numbers into a spreadsheet and determine the best cruise performance for the 175BR, but I find throughout the course of the day that my hand kept settling at about 3,000 RPM, which turned out to be about 24 and a half, 25 miles an hour. That's where the boat felt most comfortable to me. With full fuel, two people on board and test gear, R175BR had an easily trailerable test weight of just under 2,750 pounds. With the 135 horsepower 3 liter Merc Cruiser, the only engine offered on this model, we reached a top speed of 44.1 miles per hour. At that speed, we were burning 11 gallons per hour and getting just over 4 miles per gallon. With a full 21 gallons of fuel on board, that means a range of 76 miles. Well, that's our look at the performance and handling of the 175BR from Bayliner. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.